Okay. So if you guys don't know, I am Dr. Nina OBGYN. Um, some people know me as just new me and I am one of the ambassadors for Match Resident. And so I wanted to record this residency reflection video because I think it's important. <laughs> Um, I am currently a PGY1, almost PGY2. Oh my God, this year has gone by so fast. And I am an OBGYN and um, my residency is at the Medical College of Wisconsin and it's in Milwaukee, um, which by the way is a very good residency program for my specialty. It has been just a lot a lot in general just with emotions um, adjusting to residency over this past year and you know starting from not knowing anything really and now kind of feeling like I know something but definitely still having struggles right I think that's the whole thing about being a life a lifelong learner like you will always be learning something every day um, and you may always feel like you don't know something and, and you have a ways to go to fill the gaps and that's kind of how it's been for me I was very lucky to have very good chiefs I think that makes a huge difference um, when you have people that can guide you and help you and I was very very lucky to have that in my residency um, my program director who is phenomenal, um, has been like super, super important to me. Um, just, just keeping me kind of like in a space of positivity. I think that she herself has done a lot for me in that regard. She probably doesn't even know this, but you know, I think those things matter in your residency support. You have to have that support from your co-residents, from your program director, from the coordinator, from your attendings that you're working with, like that is so, so important because it is an emotional roller coaster. It is also a physical roller coaster and it's very challenging. Um, you know, reflection from when I started being all happy about, you know, getting my residency and being at matching in OBGYN, like that, yes you're happy i was happy ecstatic and just just couldn't wait to start you know but then as you start getting into that work <laughs> those feelings kind of fade <laughs> and it becomes real right and so you know trying to handle all that and still be grateful definitely takes balance um because now you're in the real world and now you are actually the doctor and you are making decisions and um, we, you know, definitely it's a team effort and we make decisions um, as a team a lot of the time, if not most of the time. Um, but they are now like, you know, pushing us as the year is coming to a close to make us make the decisions because we've had a year of training and it's, they have confidence that we know, you know, how to make decisions. And I, I think that's really good. This is the preparation. And uh, I appreciate about my program, that preparation. I definitely say one thing that I would advise people to do going into residency, if at all possible, take step three. Because if you're not going, I feel like in like internal medicine, you are not going to be seeing a lot of, you know, the zebras as we call it. Um, if you're in like a subspecialty like I, because, you know, I, I don't see a lot and I, my focus for this whole year has just been on OB, right? So that is my home. And although we have patients that, you know, would fall on the, under the umbrella of medicine because of just chronic disease and stuff, we don't see a lot of it though. And so I think taking step three while things are still fresh in your mind from medical school and from your clinicals and stuff like that, I think, you know, it will be easier if you could before residency. Um, because first year, at least for me and my experience, like 
you're trying to adjust to something totally new. So trying to do step three during that time can be very, very challenging, just finding the time to study. Um, and I did not take it as yet. So my program allows us to take it in second year. It's actually required to take it by second year, December. So now I am getting in gear to try to study for that, you know, because second year is starting July 1. So my goal is to try to take my exam before October so I could just have it all the way. Um, but yeah, that's my advice to definitely try to take step three prior to residency. Um, but if you're able to take it first year, try to do that and get it out the way. What else? Um, what else? For me, I think too, having a network of friends, if you are not close with your co-residents, um, or just some type of support makes a huge difference. I don't know what I would have really been like if my family wasn't here. Um, because one thing, I come from like a very sunny place um, where it doesn't get very cold and I am in a place where it's practically cold all the time. Like we are in June and I still have a like sweatshirt because it's like in the 60s. Um, and it's not a lot of sun here. And so I definitely battled with depression during this time. And I feel like if you never knew that you had depression before because it never manifested, it would show itself during these type of times. And that's what happened to me. Um, and I don't know where I would have been if my family wasn't here for support. Um, so I think that is super, super, super important to have some type of support, whether it's family or friends or church or counseling or whatever you need, try to have that structure of support in place um, because a lot of times you will need it. You will need something or someone to lean on um, to help bring you through those tough times. And so that is another thing that I would suggest too. Um, but overall, I am grateful. I am living the dream, <laughs> as we say. Um, I am tired all the time because we work a lot <laughs> um, and that's just how it is in residency I think all residency programs like you're gonna work way more than you've ever worked but that is just a small amount you know of time in your life right three to four years if you go on to specialize maybe a little bit more um, but in the grand scheme of things that is probably not how your life will look unless you want it to look that way so that's kind of what I keep telling myself, like, you know, yeah, I'm working like, you know, an average of 80 hours um, over a week, but it's like, and it's not really, I, I, I'll take that back. It's not an average of 80 over a week, but I would say it's an average of 60, 65 over a week, but there are some weeks where you work 80 hours. There are some weeks you may work a hundred hours, but it all averages out in the month, right? Uh, to be no more than 80 hours because that is what ACGME has a, a limitation on and my program definitely is very aware of those and definitely tries to keep everybody in line with that um so i uh, you're just tired because you're just not used to working like that you know i prior to residency yes medical school i worked a lot but i was able to sleep when i wanted to i can take off when i want to in residency you cannot do that um so <laughs> it's a big difference <laughs> Um, I was lucky to be off this weekend, which we try to have weekends, you know, some weekends off, which maybe like two a month, which is good. I hear some residencies don't even get that. So I'm happy. I'm happy for it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. It's been a great time. I can't wait to see what my year two looks like um, and the growth and enjoying the growth and enjoying the journey and just knowing that as an IMG that we can do it. We can get into whatever specialty we want. It may take some longer than others, but don't give up. You will keep trying just like I kept trying and it will come and you will make it. Um, and just remember that. Remember that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reflection video. You guys can follow me on Instagram if you like at Dr. Nina underscore OBGYN. Um, and yeah, I don't make a lot of videos anymore because I just don't have the time. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a good day and I will talk to you later. Bye.